You own a business? You're on a journey. You own a business in 2022? Wow Business knows that journey just got a whole lot more interesting. You might close a sale like this. Or like this. And you need to connect with your team. Hi, everyone. Hey, guys. Is my camera on? <laughs> Can you hear me? Can everybody go on mute? Without even leaving home. And if you're excited to keep your business moving, head to switch to wowbusiness.com to learn about fast internet speeds, 24-7 U.S.-based support, a price lock guarantee, a 60-day satisfaction guarantee, and an offer you don't want to miss. For a limited time, fall into savings with one gig of business internet for the incredibly low price of only $99.99. We'll even throw in four months of free service, free installation, and a free modem to help make the switch easier. Learn more at switchtowellbusiness.com. Offer for new customers with a two-year agreement subject to change. Prices do not include taxes, fees, and equipment charges. Restriction supply. Switch to wowbusiness.com. Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. Can I be real for a second? That goal you have to exercise and eat better, you really can do it. But nobody is going to do it for you. And nobody has to because you can do it if you have the right tools and a community that cares about helping you get results. And that's us, Beachbody. It's as convenient as your TV or laptop, but you need to decide that you're worth it. Let us help you succeed. Here's how. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great. And it listened to me. It walked out of the thicket. It turned around and looked at me. They looked up, and in this tree, there was a monkey man. And the monkey man jumped down out of the tree and started running away. And suddenly, they're right in front of the car. He slams on the brakes and manages stop and he's skidding because it's not quite, you know, um, graveling. And for literally for about a second and a half, they just stood there because they don't know where to go. And you tell them panicking, they're like roof nothing. And they're, they're, their face is like twitching. Welcome back to Bigfoot Society, a podcast where we focus on cryptids, the strange and the unexplained of this world. If you've got a story or something weird to share, send an email over to me at bigfootsociety at gmail.com. And if you'd like to support this show, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. And now on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, we've got a... uh Mr. M.K. Davis uh, with us today. How's it going, M.K.? Oh, doing great. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. We're, we've got a nice nice fall day out here in Iowa and not too bad and, you know, can't complain. I'm able to talk to some, some fun people today, so uh, it's a good day for me, sir. And how about yourself? Well, uh, I'm, it's, it's a really nice day down here in Mississippi. The sun is shining. It's warmed up real nice. We've had some cooler weather, uh, but this is my time of the year. I, I love the fall. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Uh, MK, take a f- if you wouldn't mind taking a few minutes and, and telling people about what it is they should know about yourself. Okay. Well, well basically, I kind of backed into the Bigfoot world. Uh, I was uh, doing astrophotography. And this was back when it was done with film. And I came across a couple of photos. You know, the Internet is like a big vacuum cleaner. It, yeah. Uh, it, it just put, think people leak stuff out onto it. Yep. And there was these two wonderfully produced photographs. They were so strikingly clear that uh, it caught my attention. I said, well, you know, I, Everything I'd ever seen of the Patterson Bigfoot film was dark and grainy and shaky. And, and and I recognized that people had used some of the techniques that you use in astrophotography, you know, to, to rescue faint detail. Uh, and I, I could see that that had been employed on these photos, and I, I became interested in them. I, I started making uh, inquiries about where these came from. 
and and of course there's a general rule is you can't get a good picture from a bad film right uh, if it if that film truly was no good where did these photos come from and so i, I began an inquiry uh into that and and i began to collect images and i made connections i spoke at a at a uh, couple of conferences up in oregon and and uh, made connections with uh, some people from Canada who were able to get access to the better images. So I began a collection of the better images. They sent them to me because they they realized that I was making an honest effort to to d- deep dive into the film. A- and I felt like that the film would, when you got the best versions of it, and then you you did some of the things that you can do to film to stabilize it, uh, sure. rem- remove <clears throat> the planes. All the it's got four or five planes of motion. You know the hand motion shaking, the 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 legs are up and down when you're running, and and it's all over the place. And you, if you can you can take th- that out of there. And so uh, I said it should tell its own story. Uh, it may not need me. To do any explaining, just put it together in its best form and let people look at it. Hmm. Uh, and, and I think it, by and large, has has done that. It, it, the film is much more uh, widely accepted, uh, and so uh, with in in that form, that is, you know, uh, it, it when it's shaky and grainy and dark and all over the place, you you can pretty much say what you want to say about it. You know, if you're a skeptic, it, you know, they, you could say what you want or or if you're you believe it's this or that or the other. But when it's in its best form, it, it uh, most of that is eliminated and and it leaves you with just a jaw dropping piece of cinema. Uh, there's so many different questions. Um so, I mean, you look at the Patterson-Gimlin film, and it is not a clear piece of film. But then you said you're able to get these shots of the film that are are pretty clear. Um, I just want to make sure, did I understand that correctly? Right, right. It's it's amazing the amount of degradation takes place right. when you make when you make a copy. Uh, sure. and, and different copies are made different ways, uh, and you also change film stocks. Uh, so if you if you start off with a twenty five speed coat of color two, which is the second best that that uh, as Kodachrome two that that Kodak made, it was only Technicolor was better. Uh, at twenty five speed, you can make a a mural in the size of the side of a barn, and okay. it'll be clear. Uh, so, you know, but if you transfer it over to something else, that's like, say 500 speed, then you got grain Mm. and you, you brought, you, you project that you got a grainy film and and then you, you copy it, you build contrast. So each time you copy it, the, the whites become whiter and the the darks become darker. And so you end up with a silhouette walking across a white sandbar. (laughs) Yeah, that's no good. Uh, and it's and it's grainy. So and it, 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 you see what I mean. Uh, uh, the handling of the film is is probably the 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 worst thing that happened to the film. Uh, it, it, if that film had been treated correctly, sure. Uh, it, it, it it we would probably have it in textbooks now. But you know it, it, it's it's getting there. So. You're saying you had these certain stills. Um, are, are these things like you had, uh, you know, when I think of the uh, the PG film, I'm thinking like uh, thinking of stills. I'm thinking like three frame 352, stuff like that. Like what kind of uh, stills were, were you getting? What was in these these uh, these these shots that you uncovered? Well, I got some from Mrs. Patterson that was just sterling. Okay. Uh, they were transparencies. Uh, four okay. by five transparencies. Wow! Uh, just they were so wonderfully clear. I mean, it it make a lump come up in your throat. Uh, when when she got them down, she said, "Well, let me let me show you guys 
some of his Roger's uh, stuff here, and she she pulled this shoebox out of the top of a closet. Oh my goodness! And she put she put it on a, a table, and she went to pick an envelope out of it, and caught a hold to these transparencies and dumped them in the floor. <sighs> Wow. I picked them up. She and she says, "Oh, those are Rogers negatives." I I said, "No, ma'am. They're, these are not negatives. They're they're positive transparencies." Uh, I held it up to the light, and uh, I mean, I, my jaw just dropped at their at their quality and the clarity yeah. of them. Uh, it, it it was it was what I thought it would be, you know, if you could get back closer to the master. Yeah. Uh, so. You know, uh, that, that uh, you know, opened a lot of people's eyes. I published it. It was frame 352, mm -hmm. which I got, mm, I think, seven frames from her. And I got uh, frames that were created from the master by a man named Bruce Bonney, who was employed by Rene DeHinden sure. to do that. Uh, and they were fabulous photos as well um and so and I, some came from canada you know uh okay. others came from the west coast uh, so i actually had a copy of the film to work with for a couple of years uh so it it's it has i've been gradually able to to improve the film improve the stability of it take that hand motion out because we're only made to interpret one plane of motion hmm. at a time you know you got all those different planes of motion we know uh it's it's walking so it's doing some motion and the background's going from right to left and then uh the the person holding the camera is mm -hmm. got movement you know all of that movement it causes the mind to freeze and it, it can't interpret it because it, it's, it's looking at too much information from too many angles. Sure. Uh, so when you put it, bring it all to center and you make it stable, then you can see the minute details, the minutia. Uh, you can see the things that you recognize in your daily life. Uh, the motion, the, the movement of muscles under the skin and things like that, mm -hmm. which are biomechanical, you know, uh, that that's what we trust our eyes for, you know, to tell us. We don't we don't think that with the people we see every day are hoaxes, you know, uh, it's only when you can't see it good that that you can call it a hoax or or any other thing you want to call it. It, it all goes away when you can see it good. So here's a here's a direct question for you. Um, being so, you you say you're able to see it extremely clear, you know, through over the years. So, in your personal opinion, do you think that we are dealing with a hoax or something that is uh, real, the real creature? It's it's absolutely for certain real. Okay. It's no hoax. Uh, it's it is you know exactly what it's portrayed to be uh, what they call a sasquatch. Interesting. Um, it, looking over, you know, you've analyzed this film so many times, so many different ways. Have you noticed uh, things from the film that you know maybe other people haven't caught? you know, look the way that they're looking at it or any details that jumped out to you? Well, I mean, aside from the, the subject of the film, you know, there's, there's other things going on. Yeah, it, it, anytime you film a live event, you know, you pick up things, the camera per picks up things that, that uh, were, you know, if you, if you had produced a hoax, you would be in total control of what's on the film. But if you're in a live event, you're not. You're not in control of anything. You're filming the the world as it is, mm. as it is occurring in front of you. Uh, there's there's behind the stump. There's something behind the stump that moves, but it doesn't show enough of itself to get a an ID. Okay. Uh, when she when she's walking by, it's it makes them 
a move on the, you see see it on the right the left side of the stump first then the right side of the stump and then a little bit comes to the top hmm. like it's squatted down behind it um but it doesn't it doesn't give you an, a, a complete ID on it but you know it doesn't stand up so um, you think it might it might be a different uh, another another maybe adolescent most creature likely it, yeah, yeah yeah it's most likely that's what it is uh, hmm. and and uh, you know couple couple together with uh, some of the things you should see uh, especially her back uh, you can see these muscles under that shoulder blade you can see the shoulder blade moving uh you know the the the, the two sides of the glutes you know yeah, a lot of people independent. yep yep that's been a subject uh, uh you know uh, people have used that as kind of a uh, a way of objecting to the film. They say it looks like a pillow, but that's only because they're looking at a bad copy of the film. If you look at the good one, you could see that split and it's, it's moving. They're moving independently. Um, Interesting. And, and some of the early parts of the film, which they don't show much on TV, uh, cause it is so shaky and grainy when you stabilize it you can you can see the glutes very well mm -hmm. uh on the inside of the uh of the kind of up in the crack of the glutes you can see the hair is worn off so she's done a lot of scooting around in tight places you know maybe in a cave maybe in an sure. overhang that type of thing um so you know that that to, to me, it's it's only sixty seconds, but it's it's a, a fantastic sixty seconds. It's absolutely absolutely wild. Yeah. I mean, I remember the first time yeah. I saw it on TV, and it was like a in search of rerun or something. But even then, with that copy of it, I mean, it's just like what is going on? Um, have you gotten the uh, the uh, ability to? Have you been able to go out to the film site? I've been out there probably. 15 times oh wow from probably. mississippi yeah yeah wow uh, for various <clears throat> reasons uh i go out there i did a uh some compression tests on the sand and i analyzed the sand uh so that i could membership fees apply after free trial cancel any time can i be real for a second that goal you have to exercise and eat better you really can do it but nobody is going to do it for you and nobody has to, because you can do it if you have the right tools and a community that cares about helping you get results. And that's us, Beachbody. It's as convenient as your TV or laptop, but you need to decide that you're worth it. Let us help you succeed. Here's how. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great. Right now, Amazon is offering some amazing extra perks that come with a job offer. If you start a warehouse job, you can get a $1,000 sign-on bonus. That means you start earning a paycheck right away, plus you get extra cash to use before the holidays. Applying is so easy, you don't even need an interview. It's never been so rewarding to start an hourly job that's close to home. So what are you waiting for? To join the team today, visit Amazon.com slash sign-on bonus. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. Uh, know a little bit more about, you know, what the the impressions that she left behind. Mm. Uh, the sand is is shale sand. It's not it's not the round sand like like you get with quartz crystals and stuff that rolls. It'll roll out under your feet. Uh, shale is made of tiny little platelets, and they bind together. And they they don't they don't. Uh, it's hard to put a deep print in shale sand it it would have to be like very very loose and fluffy fluffed up to do it if it's been sitting there any length of time you can't hardly stomp a print in it wow and uh and so well in the she was she made a, a, a pretty sizable dent in it you know uh some of her prints are pretty deep hmm. uh, so it gives you an idea of weight it, it's, it's 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 far heavier than we are i'd have to be to make an impression and yeah. you know yeah. sounds like in sand like that you know well that was one of john green's uh, assertions was that that he he offered a hundred thousand dollars to anybody who could make a footprint out there 
uh, as deep as hers, no one collected. Wow. Because no one could. That's crazy. You know, in that type of sand. You know, using your the way you've looked at the film and your film knowledge and things like that, how is it possible? Like, what's the next step with the film? Can we make it even better than, you know, the best version we have right now? Or are we at the point where, you know, it's it's probably not going to get any better the way that we can look at it? Well, I have this to say about it. Okay. That's what people were saying before I got a hold to it. Okay. Interesting. It, 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 yeah. So, so you, it's, you know, you, you, uh, technology improves. Yeah. And when technology improves, uh, if I find an, another method or angle for processing this film, I'll go back through the whole thing again. Hmm. Uh, and, and and I have I have discovered or or developed some processes that work pretty well. Uh, the the film was taken at a very slow frame rate. In other words, only about half the event was actually filmed. The rest is lost between the frames. Uh, it's if you think about you know it's it's only a capture of a, a instant of time each frame. Sure. And what's between them? was missed so uh but you can still go back and there's some processes that you can use that will uh, uh link those two frames together all the frames in, in such a way that it makes a gradual transition rather than an instant jump mk this sounds like an ai thing easy you know yeah, i don't know if you've it, looked it, into the ai it, stuff that's going on right now well, the only thing about AI is they use a uh, prediction software, sure. and that's not yeah. scientific. Okay, that, that's that that's that's used for for creating the 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 Disney cartoons and stuff that are so lifelike. Yep. Uh, it uh, the artist will have two frames, and then the computer will fill in the rest with about fifty eight. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. So you can't if the computer is making most of the film. You, you you have to you know dismiss it as a scientific thing. It's just artistic. Uh, science science uh, has to, you have to use only the film. Mm-hmm. If, if you if you try to predict and you you the computer only predicts what people tell the computer to predict. You know so uh, minutia things that are important uh, that would tell you this is a, an actual organic you know, living thing might be missed by the computer. Interesting. You know, so it's not scientific. Uh, so in the, in, for the sake of science, you know, you stay with the film. Uh, although it produces wonderful, I call it eye candy. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, there's nothing wrong with using AI. Uh, I think that the film should be, all the work on the film should be non-AI and then when you have a final product, use the AI on it to create uh, an even more aesthetic with, version of it. With the disclaimer that, hey, this is AI, but doesn't it look right, cool? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. You have to, yeah. you have to, discla- uh, when it, this man did, uh, he did a predictive software a, a while back, and people were sending me copies of it, and I, and I love to look at it, but... Uh, I had to explain, you know, to people that you can't, that he was recommending it be used for research purposes. And I, I said, you can't hmm. because you, your film shot at 16 frames a second and, and it adds up to 60. So, wow. the, uh, you know, for, what, 44 frames are computer generated. You know, they're not, they're not part of the film. They were, just guesses at what lied between the frames, yeah. you know. Uh, so uh, that that has to, you know, be put aside for another day. And uh, you have to go with what's absolutely on the film, 100%. And it, because you're trying to identify this one way or another as, is it real? And is if it is, what is it? You know, so you need all of that minutia. 
thinking back to the, uh, you know, the times you were able to go out to Bluff Creek, you know, or even the first time that you were able to go out there, was there anything that you were in the area for the first time and that really opened your eyes? You're like, oh, I never thought of it that way. But now that I'm here, this makes sense. Well, you you get a good idea of the remoteness, number one, sure. of just how far back this was, you know, from civilization. And even if you even if you went to town, you'd only be going to a, a little small town of Orleans, right? You know, which is I mean, it's it's just uh, you could blink and miss it. Uh, so you know you're you're out in uh, in the area uh, that 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 seldom gets visited. I think that it was getting some visits at the time because of uh, an effort to construct a road through there, uh, which they call the Go Road from mm-hmm. Gasquet on the coast to Orleans back in the interior, and uh, that's a road that they have a hard time with to this day. Yeah. That road is closed most of the year. It's got boulders on it, you know, and all kinds. Of, they, they'll clear it off for a month or so and start snowing again. You know, it's way up in the high elevations of Siskiyou's. Uh, so uh, they don't get a lot of visitors through there most of the year. Uh, that's Bigfoot country. Gotcha. Yeah, from, you know, I've talked to a lot of different guys about that area, and it sounds like those roads are they're always messing up cars you got to be careful for sure yeah yeah they, they really weren't the indians it's, it's it, they consider that area to be sacred okay and uh they didn't want that constructed they even formed human chains really? to try to prevent equip oh wow prevent equipment from going in there uh they they believed and i i'm quoting a what I read in black and white, mm-hmm. they believe that at one time there was another type of human on the earth or in that area, and that they returned to the stars from two mountain peaks. One called Doc, they call it Dr. Rock or Medicine Peak, uh, and the other is Chimney Rock. And they return through a hole in the sky. And that's why that area is sacred to them. And they they don't want the, the timber cut out of it or invasion of you know, woodcutters or, or really much of anyone in there uh, because, well, it's probably because of the presence of these things, Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Mm. When I think, I was just thinking of the phrase hole in the sky. What do you, you know, I know what I might think of, man, I'm thinking of like, is that our version of what we call portals today? I don't know. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, a hole in the sky. If you think of that term, you know, uh, <laughs> that would fit the bill for what they call a portal or a way of mm. entering into another dimension or another area uh, in, in, in a way that, that, you know, it's non-mechanical, yeah. you know, oh, man. you're, you're leaving, but you're not leaving in a car. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not, <laughs> you know, it, it was, it was, it was only from those two and, and they train their shamans on those two peaks to this day. They go, and sit and fast and, uh, and, and, and try to become a shaman by spending time out there on those two peaks. So they didn't want nobody coming out there and bother them. Mm. Uh, that is, that is, I'm always fascinated by native American, you know, legends and lore and stories. And that's just, that's very, very cool stuff. Um, before we, you know, in our last few minutes, do you have any advice for, let's say, individuals that are getting into, you know, analyzing their own Bigfoot footage or, 
you know, footage of Bigfoot that they've been given by others. Any any advice that you have? Well, my, my advice is don't be intimidated. Uh, if if you if you think there's potential there, try to learn what you can do. We have a, a lot of things available to just the average fellow mm. uh, with a good computer, and uh, and if you're creative, uh, you can learn to to custom fit those programs to your unique problems with that film. Uh, every film has its own good and bad points. Uh, they're middle of the road mostly. Uh, the films are. They got a, a lens and and the media and all. It's middle of the road. So when it comes to uh, you want to look at minutia, the very small tiny things. You want it to be clear. Then you you have to develop a scheme for for filtering to to boost the contrast to boost the, the uh, sharpness uh, the, they uh, they have uh, lenses like the normal middle of the road lenses uh, they don't bring to focus all the colors to one point that's called chromatic aberration so you can find the ones the colors that are not completely and properly focused and if they're digital, you can delete them from the image. If they're, if you're dealing with real film, you can use a filter and expose the image through a filter and take that color out. Mm. And and then the film will sharpen up. It'll it'll be a false color in the sense of the real film. In the digital, it'll show it in black and white. But you boost sharpness 20, 30 percent, one percent. Well, you'll see 10 new things. Oh, wow. So you, you get an idea why it's worth the effort uh, in the Patterson film to go back and do it again when a, a little piece of technology is made available that will boost it. Uh, even if you don't get but 1%, 10 new things, when you got a film that's like that, that's a, that's a very important. That could be a game changer for doing. sure. Yeah, it yeah. surely could. Wow. I, I feel like this is uh, definitely an interview that could give people a lot of rabbit trails to go down, and that's a good thing. But, uh, MK, thank you so much for uh, – it's crazy thank to you. think it's already the end of the half an hour, but thank you so much for taking some time out to, to chat with me today. Um, before you go, is there uh, – you know, if people want to keep up to date with what you're doing, um, any uh, different ways that they can do that? Well, uh, uh, you can go to my uh, YouTube channel, which is Green Wave FB 2010. Uh, it's an old football channel that I converted up, just brought my Bigfoot stuff nice. over there. Uh, it, it's fairly popular. Right. I hadn't put much on it lately. Uh, I've, I've been doing more Facebook stuff. Uh, if you want to go to uh, and just MK Davis, okay. you'll see me on the picture. Uh, and uh, if uh, put in a, a request to be a friend, and you can see all of that. Uh, and then I have uh, a WordPress site, which has got some pretty really good stuff on it. Uh, it's, uh, let's see, what did I call that? WordPress.com. I can, I can also uh, I'll look it up as well and I'll I'll put it in the it up, show yeah. notes. I I was looking at that earlier. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'll make sure that's all linked for you no problem. But um the David the Davis report, I'm ah, sorry. Perfect. I, I just got gotten kind of tired perfect. today. The Davis report.wordpress.com okay. and it'll it'll take you Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much yeah. again MK for hanging out with us today and uh have a great rest of your weekend, sir. Thank you. The views and opinions expressed are those of the guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Bigfoot Society. Any content provided by our guests are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone. Thank you. Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. Can I be real for a second? That goal you have to exercise and eat better, you really can do it, but nobody is going to do it for you. 
And nobody has to, because you can do it, if you have the right tools, and a community that cares about helping you get results. And that's us, Beachbody. It's as convenient as your TV or laptop, but you need to decide that you're worth it. Let us help you succeed. Here's how. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great. Right now, Amazon is offering some amazing extra perks that come with a job offer. If you start a warehouse job, you can get a $1,000 sign-on bonus. That means you start earning a paycheck right away, plus you get extra cash to use before the holidays. Applying is so easy, you don't even need an interview. It's never been so rewarding to start an hourly job that's close to home. So what are you waiting for? To join the team today, visit Amazon.com slash sign-on bonus. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer.